This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1309, Are We Teaching Our Children to Be Perfectionists? by Dr. Margaret Rutherford of drmargaretrutherford.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back for a parenting edition of ORD. I'm Greg Audino, your host and narrator. So happy to have you here with me today, as I've got a post that is truly important for everyone, not just the parents. I know I say that a lot on our parenting episodes, but this time it's really, really true. It's always true. Um, (laughs) anyway, in spite of the title, this post is about a lot more than perfectionism, or, uh, maybe it can be better categorized as emotional perfectionism. Either way, it's what I feel to be a very important read for all. So let's not waste any more time talking about it. We're going to jump into this post from Dr. Margaret Rutherford and optimize your life. Are we teaching our children to be perfectionists by Dr. Margaret Rutherford? of drmargaretrutherford.com. What are you teaching your child about admitting vulnerability? About feeling something that they don't want to feel, but do? About revealing hurt or pain? About depression? Maybe you don't even believe children can be depressed. But you're wrong. Depression in kids is on the rise, whether it's because of the well-documented link between time spent alone on their ever-present phones, or because of feeling less than when comparing their ordinary days with the highlight reels of their peers live on TikTok or Instagram, or how quickly vicious rumors can get around via texting. Children are getting more depressed. But here's something even more serious. There's classic depression, symptoms such as depressed mood, not enjoying things that you've previously enjoyed, foggy thinking, a tendency to isolate, sleep and appetite changes, maybe even a sense of hopelessness or helplessness, talking about suicide. We're all told to watch for these very signs in our kids. Perfectly hidden depression. But depression doesn't always look like the commercials on TV. Because some very dangerously depressed kids look as if their lives are perfect. And they don't know how to talk about what's really going on. Maybe we tell these perfect-looking kids to relax, chill, take it easy. While at the same time, the expectations haven't changed. And no one is talking about vulnerability. Parents haven't molded that it's okay to admit feeling overwhelmed, to talk about the discrepancy that can exist between what life looks like and what it feels like to be living it. Kids can even feel blamed that now they're supposed to not look as if things are rough. So they keep hiding and grow more lonely and despairing. Fighting against the perfectionist standard. There are some college kids who are fighting back and putting a name to something that they're beginning to refuse to live up to because it's killing them. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for college students. And finally, kids are trying to lead the way to changing that. And the movement is beginning at some of the finest colleges in the U.S. Ever heard of the Stanford Duck Syndrome? Caroline Beaton, in a Gen Y Psychology Today column, quotes a Stanford blogger on the syndrome. Quote, One Stanford blogger explained, Everyone on campus appears to be gliding effortlessly across this lake college. But below the surface, our little duck feet are paddling furiously, working our feathered little tails off. For Stanford students, the duck syndrome represents a false ease and fronted genius. Frustration, anxiety, self-doubt, effort, and failure don't have a place in the Stanford experience. End quote. Where did we learn from our mistakes go? How about the pen face? Kids are wanting other kids who go to Penn to stay away from the hypocrisy of putting on a smile and trying to look like everything's going smoothly, when in reality it's very difficult. Yet, there are still some who don't seem to get that a perfect-looking life for a child can mask depression. Recently, I heard a psychiatrist answer questions about what parents should do if they suspect their child is depressed. The interview was showcasing the recent book, What Made Maddie Run, by Kate Fagan a story of one young female Penn track star who jumped to her own death. Her parents agreed to the book in order to help others through their own tragedy. He once again paraded the classic symptoms of depression, isolating, sleeping too much or not at all, wanting to drop out of things. By then, I was yelling at the TV, because this did not describe Maddie Holleran. Certainly at times, she complained about not enjoying track anymore, about how she wasn't enjoying being at Penn. But she didn't look consistently depressed. She put on a great face when taking a selfie or FaceTiming with friends. Maddie Holleran didn't tell anyone that she was planning her own death. But she was. 
She was perfectly hiding her depression. And I greatly admire her parents for allowing her story to be told, because it is so very important. What do our kids need? What our kids need is for us to look beneath the surface, to model talking about our own struggles and vulnerability, to not spend our own lives chasing after a life that looks perfect. And the frightening thing? You still might miss it. Because depression and despair can be hidden far too well, no matter what your age. I have counseled too many people over the years who are reeling, just like the Hollerans, from an apparently sudden suicide of a loved one. The guilt and horror are palpable in the room. Secrets were kept. The actual intensity of whatever was troubling them was never revealed, or only alluded to in a way where a family can rack it up to age-appropriate struggles or going through a bad time. The best thing you can do is to know the signs, not only of classic depression, but also of perfectly hidden depression. You just listened to the post titled, Are We Teaching Our Children to Be Perfectionists? by Dr. Margaret Rutherford of drmargaretrutherford.com. And a big thank you to Dr. Margaret for another hugely important post. It feels like a hard post to add supplement to. It was really touching, especially if you know a bit about the Madison Holleran story. And I almost don't want to taint this article with my own commentary, but um, she hit the nail on the head when she said that we must model talking about our own struggles and vulnerability. Whether you're a parent or not, this is one of those slow, intangible things that can truly make a difference for yourself and those around you. It is essential to know and showcase the fact that these things aren't off limits. Because when we receive constant reinforcement that they are not off limits, our guards go down. There's less fear of judgment. There's more normality around it. And sometimes there needs to be someone there to lead the way. And to me, it seems as though our general tendency to hide our struggles, that's a malleable thing and a habit that can be unlearned just as easily as it's been learned. And it seems the world is trending in that direction, which is great, but it's just, you know, it's going to take continued leadership. So I implore you all, keep working on this. Find someone safe you can open up to if need be, even if it's just about small things, and be a support system for someone else. Let someone know you're there to listen if they need it. And it might not prove to be a great gift right away, but if you trust me, I promise you that it is for all involved. All right, my friends, that's going to do it for today. Thanks a lot for joining me once again, and I will see you again tomorrow where I'll be reading a post from Highly Sensitive Refuge. That's where your optimal life awaits.